Meet Billy the Kid Deep, two-time featherweight and super featherweight champion of the world and an international boxing sensation. Yet despite all the glitz and glamour that comes along with being a former two-time world champion, there's an untold story that Billy hides behind his all too familiar smile. We sat down with him to uncover the painful hidden truths of what it means to be a former champion of the world. To many, becoming world champion is an accomplishment like no other. And to Billy, this was no different. Tell me about the moment you became world champion for the first time. I could not believe it. It's like that moment had finally come. Like I was now champion of the world. It was like, for me, it was like, oh, my, such a proud moment because my brother's gonna go to school now and tell his friends that his brother's a champion of the world. I remember this one moment where I got up on the corner post and I told him to give me the belt and the crowd was awesome and I put the belt up like that and the whole crowd just erupted like, yeah. And I was like, champion of the world, you know what I mean? Two-time champion of the world in the history books. To be crowned world champion twice is a feat not many can attest to. But for Billy, it was a dream turned reality. So can we hold that now? Yeah, yeah, for sure, no doubt. So this is it, here, right now. You got the leopard skin and all, haven't yeah. you? Let's put it on, let's put it on. So that's it, that's the bad boy. That's right there, right there. But yeah, this was um, everything I worked so hard for. You see, ever since Billy was a young boy, he dreamed of being champion of the world. Not for the fame and the riches, but more so for the love of the sport. When I started boxing at a young age, it was all about the trophies and the belts. It was never about money. But after winning the championship for himself, his gaze swiftly shifted to the luxurious and lavish lifestyles of those who had preceded him. I, I grew up watching people like Oscar La Hoya, Shane Mosley, Prince Nassim, Mike Tyson. Guys that had gone on to become multi, multi millionaires of their sport, like multi, right? And I was hanging out with these people. I was in their cars, their Ferraris, their Lamborghinis, their, their Maybachs, their Rolls Royces. And I'm thinking to myself, that's gonna be me one day. An expectation that was in fact about to go into overdrive after he crossed paths with one of the biggest names in the boxing world. I saw um, Floyd Malvar when I was in America on a holiday. And I seen him, I said, hey, Floyd. He goes, hey, champ, what's up? And I said, I'm champion of the world now. And he said, we'll be in touch. That's all he said, we'll be in touch. This short encounter soon led him to being invited to join forces with one of the biggest boxing teams in America, TMT Promotions, otherwise known as The Money Team. 50 Cent and Floyd Marva have forged this company called TMT Promotions and they want to sign you up. I was like, man, my life is about to change now. So I get there, we're hanging out with 50 Cent now. Rolls Royces, Lamborghinis, five-star restaurants, the best hotels. Like, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm walking through, I'm walking through the lobby areas with 50 Cent, like right next to me and people are saying, oh, there goes 50 Cent and Drake. And he's like, that's not Drake, that's Billy the Kid. That's the IBF champion of the world. The thought of rolling with some of the biggest names in the boxing and entertainment world was a fantasy he had only ever dreamt of. You know, these guys, the best at what they do, they know how to make money, and you know, I want to join the team and I want to make some money too. When I was signed to 50 Cent, the only thing that I had in my head was, I'm going to buy a Ferrari, I'm going to buy a Lamborghini, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I spent the money before I even got it in my mind. Wallah. You were shopping already. Allah. <laughs> I was looking at cars like I was going to buy them tomorrow. Yet as pretty as it all seemed from the outside, Billy soon found himself fighting his own internal moral dilemma. Being around these people was like ghadab, you know what I mean? Like being around 50 Cent and, and I, who I thought, man, this is going to be amazing. I'm hanging around with 50 Cent, you know what I mean? Biggest rap star in the game at the moment and all that. Well, it became like God things that he wanted me to be involved in, which I never took part in, you know, come to his parties and I never took any part of that. And I think because I never took part in any of that, he, he didn't, I didn't, he didn't, he didn't gravitate or I didn't gravitate towards him because of that situation, you know. Already struggling to fit in, Billy's term with TMT was soon to fall off course, following an internal conflict, causing TMT promotions to eventually split. To make matters worse, this was all happening right before a major world title fight Billy was preparing for. 50 Cent 
he says to me, oh, look, I'm not going to be able to pay you the money that I promised you and whatever. And I'm like, so he's doing this to me the day before the fight, playing with my head, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of felt like he was against me, you know what I mean? Like he was working against me. Well, the next day the fight is on. I ring up my mum on the way to the venue and I said, hey, mum. She said, yeah, I said, don't watch the fight tonight. And just like that, his short-lived dream soon came to an end. But as difficult as this was for him to stomach, nothing could prepare him for the major fight he was about to face back home after receiving a call from his wife. I'll never ever forget it. I'm sitting in the lounge room and my mum is standing directly in front of me and I get this phone call from Sarah. She goes, hey, what are you doing? I said, nothing. She goes, oh, where are you? I said, I'm at home. She goes, oh, he's sitting down? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I just want to let you know, I, uh, I got cancer. I said, what? She goes, I've got cancer. And I was like, you're joking. And then she just burst into tears, started crying. And I was like, to my mom, I go, she's got cancer. And my mom's like, oh my God. Two months and 10 days later, his wife sadly passed away leaving Billy grief-stricken and at the lowest point in his life. I thought of you, tell me what happened So many voices in my head but The saddest part I remember of this whole experience was I remember, I remember her father, it was like He said to the doctor, he goes His exact way of doing it was like what do you mean? What do, what do you mean? What do you, what is it? Money? You guys need money? Because I have money. I could do whatever you want, you know. And and they were like, sir, it's got nothing to do with money or anything. We've done everything we can for Sarah, and you know we we don't think she'll be with us much longer. And the only thing going through my mind was, what good is money now? He never expected the love of his life to be taken away so soon. Yet just as Allah gives, Allah takes away. And it was a lesson that Billy learned the hard way. The, the, the trauma that came after that is something that I wish I could turn the clock back on, you know what I mean? Because there was so much trauma that came after that, that point of her death, you know, like things like that I experienced, you know, like for the first time I actually went into a grave and buried Sarah. And I was just thinking, man, how did this happen? Well, like for six weeks straight after her death, I was a regular visitor of the, the cemetery, possibly two to three times a day, a day. And I wouldn't tell anyone I was going there. I would just go there and sit there by myself. Dealing with this loss was no doubt the biggest fight Billy had seen in his career thus far. Yet by turning to his religion and reviving his connection with Allah, he was able to make it through. The only calmness that I would find in my life is through Salat. That's the truth. I'm not just saying this because it's the right thing to say, but I'm telling you the truth. Any time that I was feeling pain or hurt or upset about something, I thought I felt like, you know what, I'm just gonna suddenly and just I'm gonna ask Allah, help me. Take this sorrow away from me. Help me. Take, look, you know, and, and after Sarah's death, well, the sorrow lasted for a long time. How has being a Muslim helped you throughout your life? I, I believe strongly because my father had instilled us that nothing in your life happens without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything that you face is a test. And any calamity that you face is just a test. And it's just, and it's just about doing your best to come out better on the other side. It's a test, everything's a test. And Sarah's death was a major test for me. Losing fights was a big test for me. And I just felt like I got through them because you know, because I, I remained steadfast and I'd stayed on my belief that khalas, this is what Allah had willed for me. You see, all along, Billy thought being world champion would promise him a life of riches and happiness. Yet through his roller coaster of a journey, he has slowly come to realize the bitter reality. And you know what I used to say? Just this preparation for a lifetime of happiness. Because I believed that this bell was going to bring me a lifetime of happiness. And then Allah showed you. 
that the, nah, the happiness doesn't come through a title, you know what I mean? It comes from Allah. That's right. You know what I mean? As a boy, Billy used to spend his days praying to be champion of the world. Yet today, he prays for something completely different. What do you pray for now? I'll tell you what I pray for. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes me while he's pleased with me. Because I know that this life is not promised. And we could be days, months, or years away from death. And I just pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps me steadfast and takes me only when he's pleased with me. Because this dunya means nothing. It really doesn't. You know what? You just do the best you can, inspire as much as you can, fear Allah as much as you can, and, and, and hope, for, hope, hope for Allah to take you in a time when you're ready. I ask Allah that he gives you what you ask him for. Amen. And more. May Allah reward you, Mom. Thank you for this opportunity, Amen. Billy. <laughs> we all have stories to tell. And I pray that this was a story that will remind you and I of our true purpose in life.